Hello friends, welcome back to Tech with Viresh. In the continuation to our series on Apache Hadoop step-by-step -step learning, today we're gonna bring out a new video in that series. This is video number two. And in this particular video, we'll see what is the design and architecture behind HDFS blocks. So HDFS blocks is one of the building blocks of how uh, data is stored in the distributed fashion. And we'll get into the nitty gritties and the design details that why do we have such kind of a design and what exactly is HDFS block. So guys, let's start. And before I proceed, I would like to request to all my viewers do like, comment and share to the videos and keep watching. So guys, if you try to look uh, the entire storage structure provided by Hadoop in the form of Hadoop distributed file system, it is based on the data blocks. Data blocks are nothing but small chunks of the huge data which you are trying to store in that particular distributed file system. So maybe you're trying to store a big file that under the hood internally would be broken into smaller chunks and those chunks would be sent to different data nodes into the Hadoop cluster. And these small chunks and pieces are what we are calling as HDFS blocks. So the entire huge data, monolithic or a single file data that we are trying to store would have an underlying representation in the Hadoop in the form of number of different blocks for one file. So in from the technical and the storage perspective, uh, blocks are stored in the continuous location on the underlying hard drive that you would have, which would be plugged behind the data nodes as part of your cluster. So if you see uh, in general, any file system, if you try to store the data uh, as a collection of blocks, uh, but in that case, in a general file system, a single file cannot be broken into multiple pieces. And there could be several reasons for that. One, the file format is all, it in itself is not supportive of that mode. Uh, HDFS has given its own format and data types and the file types that are supported, that can support this distributed nature. Files like Parky, Avro, ORC, etc. Sequence files, right? Uh, but if you talk about HDFS as a file system, it leverages those data types in special data formats and break your files into smaller chunks, what we are calling as blocks. And these blocks will be sent on different nodes in the cluster. So you'll get that distributed flavor. And at the same time, it makes, uh, it makes HDFS a very capable player to perform the horizontal scalability. You just need to add a couple of more nodes and then those nodes should be ready to accept these newer or existing pieces of data in the form of data blocks. So if we specifically talk about Hadoop 2, uh, the default block size is 128, 128 MB. This obviously is uh, configurable in your uh, HDFS uh, site.xml file. And previously in the Hadoop 1, it was 64 MB. So try to understand what does this block uh, means from the MapReduce or from the data processing perspective. So for each block, there would be an individual MapReduce process. So when you do the data processing to a MapReduce, each block is processed individually and in parallel with the processing of the other blocks. So, so that in a distributed system, you can have distributed and parallel processing of data, which eventually will help, up, help you as in scaling the overall performance and get efficient processing, right? So let's take this example. Suppose I have some sample file uh, for which right now the size is 600 MB. When I, will tr when I will try to store this file in Hadoop HDFS, so what the system will do it is it will break into these different five blocks. Right? We see here we have five blocks, A, B, C, D, and E. And the first four blocks have a, have a size of 128 MB which is the maximum default size. And the last block E has the remaining uh, data, which is the remaining 88 MB of, of that file. Now, one important point to note here in the context of this particular data node E, uh, which would be on some data node, this particular block of data E, that the remaining 
uh, 40 MB of this particular block can be leveraged further. So it's not that it will grab the entire space. That space can be leveraged further, maybe to park some other block. Okay. So this is how the construct of the data blocks in the Hadoop HDFS systems. Each thing is broken up into different pieces. And for each piece, eventually, when I'll try to do a data processing in the form of MapReduce, I'll have a single thread or a parallel processing for each block. Each block would be processed parallelly, and the results would be submitted back to the name node for that particular read-write request. Right. Moving forward, a million dollar question here we have is, why do we have block sizes 120 MB, 128 MB? I mean, what is this magical number, how we have arrived at this number, and what is the rationale behind it, right? So uh, this number is kind of, you can say, is, is kind of a benchmark to find out that is the optimum number to do the data processing in parallel. So when you have, you would have parallel processing running in for a block of 128 MB, there is a good enough size to perform even of the minimalistic clusters. For example, let's try to assert it from the min-max theory. Suppose we take, we make the block size as, as a minimum of 4 KB like we have in the Linux system. So what it will result in? So now in a big data scenario, we are trying to deal with you know gigs or terabytes of data. Now you would have lots and lots of block if the size would be 4 MB, right? And for each block, there needs to be uh, bookkeeping of the metadata, which is done by name node. Now in that case, your metadata would itself become that become bigger than the data itself if you'll have such a small size, so 4 KB, right? And that will create a lot of overhead in terms of handling the requests of read write and in terms of handling the network traffic. So that's probably is not the right uh, approach to keep it so small, the size of the blocks. Now let's take the maximize approach. Let's see if we grow this block size to some bigger number, right? Say maybe we're talking about gigs and petabytes of data. So we make this as say somewhere around say size of 500 MB or something, right? In that case, what will happen if you try to look at this picture, as as I already talked about, that for each block there is a parallel data processing. There is a data processing pipeline for block one, this for block two, and this for block three. Now suppose I have a bigger block size, right? Which is say now 500 or 800 MB or one gig kind of a size. Then in that case, even my smaller block size have finished up the processing. They've already finished up the processing. But this long-running job for that for that bigger block size will keep on holding the commit of the entire result. So a request would not be catered unless and until that long-running job would complete. And now it is dealing with a, a very huge kind of a block size, so it will take a huge amount of time. So in that case, I'm not been able to leverage that beauty of parallel processing in an optimal way, right? Here we are doing a parallel processing. These first three jobs, uh, they quickly finished within, say, a, a, a near about equal amount of time. But this long running job for a bigger block size will keep on running for a longer time. And then in spite, the shorter jobs are already finished up. I can't uh, send the response back to the requester. So that defeats my whole purpose of uh, processing the data in parallel. So that's why an ideal size uh, recommended by the Hadoop HDFS system is 128 MB. Uh, which can be uh, tuned, uh, which can be tuned uh, based on your uh, scenarios and your situations, but this is a good enough number to uh, to harness the power of uh, parallelism. Okay, now let's quickly see what are the dis different advantages we get uh, based on this block-based design of Hadoop and HDFS storage. First of all. If you see this entire design makes the entire distributed storage absolutely simple. You know, as the size of the data blocks would be consistent and fixed, it is very easy uh, from the name node perspective to calculate the number of data blocks uh, and it can check it against the amount of data that is available in the form of actual uh, disk space. And it can make the pre-calculations uh, as part of the metadata that what are the different block size and how much blocks he can handle so that he can manage the request in a better way, right? So that's make the entire storage metadata handling absolutely simple as the block size is fixed. The second advantage that we get is 
the ability to store very large files that makes absolutely sense absolute absolute sense think of say i have a very big monolithic single file which is say of um, a 200 gig or a 500 gig now if i do not have a mechanism or a design which can break this file into smaller chunks uh, like blocks in that case i would have a single block of say that 200 gig now when i'll try to process that 200 gig as part of the map reduce program it will never return me the response because it will keep on running it will be a very very long running job because now i do not have uh, the concept of distributed blocks i can't run the entire job I can't split the entire job into number of different parallel tasks so that defeats my whole purpose of leveraging the distributed dif design of parallelism now the next advantage that we have of this design obviously is fault tolerance and uh, this block based design make the entire hdfs system highly available because you can add a replication factor so that each block is replicated and in spite uh, the data nodes which are uh, simple commodity hardware even if, if, if even if in case they they goes down they go down for some reason i already have the replication of that block which is an sacrosanct copy of of that data piece so i can i can uh, hook my processing onto that newer one and already have the metadata managed and updated by name node so that make my system absolutely absolutely fault tolerant and highly available right uh, even if we talk about at the lower level from the data node perspective it simplifies the entire mechanism of storing the data uh, with the data nodes as bookkeeping or the metadata management is done by the name node the data node doesn't need to be concerned about the uh, managing any sort of uh, local copy of that uh, blocks metadata that at which point of location or which memory address it is stored uh, what kind of pointers does it carry do i have any space left and stuff like that because that all been kept uh, that all uh, management is done by name node in a distributed fashion on all, for all the data nodes so based on all these design attributes it it make the entire system absolutely simple uh, absolutely scalable to handle the huge volumes absolutely fault tolerant and highly available and even make the lowest unit of data storages and data processing data data nodes agnostic to the underground nativities of metadata management which makes my processing even further lighter and more agile and more faster so guys uh, this is what you have in this particular video today keep watching my channel and don't forget to subscribe the channel guys thanks for learning have a great day ahead bye bye